How pandemic era cars are killing the car market right now. You heard me right. There are several problems with pandemic era cars and the list includes continued high price problems to huge negative equity challenges to continuing quality control issues. And it's not just simple and annoying problems, it's engine problems too. And no, it's not just vehicles like Kia and Hyundai. Unbelievably, it's Honda too. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy. And right over here is the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. The news we have to share with you today shows a train wreck in process that should scare the pants off of many of you. <laughs> and today, we're doing something different at the end of the show. We will do it from now on. We're sharing good questions or wisdom from other viewers or some truly dumb assumptions some viewers make. Who was the savvy buyer? Who was the bad assumer? Find out at the end. Hopefully, you learn something from their wisdom or bad assumptions. Liz, <laughs> take it away. Sounds fun. First up, if you bought a car during the pandemic years, the end of 2020, all of 2021 and 2022, and you financed it, you're virtually guaranteed to be upside down in your car loan right now, and that's the worst it's ever been. That's right, and unfortunately, many consumers are just electing to let their cars go. Repossessions are skyrocketing. In December of 2023, Cox Automotive reported that inflation, the cost of cars in general, and the borrowing rates being charged by banks are causing an increase in delinquencies or repossessions. With no end in sight, Cox Automotive estimated that 1.5 million vehicles will be seized by the end of 2023, wow. up from 1.2 million in 2022. So friends, while 2022 was a bad year, 2023 has beaten 2022 by 25%. This is definitely not good. Nope. For those of you who still have your late 2020, 21, or 22 car purchases, if your car isn't in danger of being repossessed, I can tell you that you're almost 100% guaranteed to be buried in it financially. The only way to fix it is to put more cash into it. If you're thinking about trading out of it sometime soon, forget about it. Pay it down first. Remember all those dealers selling cars at MSRP with market adjustments tacked on the top, and then all the used cars being sold at near new car prices? 100% of that extra profit went right into the pockets of the dealers charging those prices, and now you're the one suffering from it. Ka-ching. Yeah. Negative equity in buyer's car is often referred to as being upside down on a car loan is a situation where the amount owed on the car is more than the car's current value. That nightmare situation is what is leading many car owners to just let their vehicles go back to the bank. But don't get too excited about those cars just yet. As you'll see in a moment, many of those cars bought overpriced during the pandemic are having a ton of car problems to boot. You heard me right. If negative equity and huge numbers of repossessions aren't enough, recalls are increasing in huge numbers right now. These are basically the pandemic cars that are being repossessed, and that's not good. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, there were more than 320 recalls for major manufacturers issued by regulators in 2023, which affects a whopping 32 million vehicles. Oh, wow. Amazingly, the number of recalls in 2023 was dramatically less than that in 2022, which had 932 recalls. For a list of the biggest offenders, here are the top 10 worst brands for recalls. Ford Motor had 56 recalls covering 5.9 million vehicles. Chrysler had 45 recalls covering 2.7 million vehicles. Next up is Mercedes with 31 recalls and 478,000 vehicles. General Motors, who some bash on for quality, had 25 recalls covering 2 million vehicles. Nissan had 23 recalls involving 1.8 million vehicles. And Kia had 21 recalls involving 3.1 million vehicles. Jaguar is also on the top 10 list with 21 recalls covering 85,000 vehicles followed by Volkswagen with, with 20 recalls in more than 452,000 vehicles. The biggest surprise was Honda. With a long-time reputation for high-quality cars, they had 19 recalls with 6.3 million cars involved. What's worse than the raw numbers at Honda, 6.3 million recalled vehicles, that is bad enough alone. But for the first time in a long time, the recalls involved their engines. No, I'm not kidding. Honda recalled nearly 250,000 vehicles because Engine rod bearings were failing, causing engines to run poorly. Honda has issued a recall because those rod bearings in the engine could wear and seize, damaging the engine, which could result in the yeah. engine running improperly or stalling while driving. This is an absolute disaster for Honda. And of course, these are the COVID era cars we are talking about. Late 2020, all of 2021 and 2022. Stay away from them. You mentioned in the opening about Hyundai and Kia engine problems. It's actually past models that are being recalled. 
In September 2023, it was announced that the Hyundai and Kia are recalling nearly 3.4 million vehicles in the U.S. and telling owners to park them outside due to the risk of engine compartment fires. The recalls covered multiple car and SUV models from the 2010 through 2019 model years, including Hyundai's Santa Fe SUV and Kia's Sorento SUV. Documents posted by the U.S. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration say the anti-lock brake control module can leak fluid and cause an electrical short, which can touch off a fire while the vehicles are either parked or being driven. Yes, so that's not a pandemic problem, but that's just a manufacturer that makes really crappy cars. It has had that reputation for years. As far as other things go, Liz, do you remember those Kia Sportages that we had on the lot in that last dealer we had in Minnesota? and their terrible handling situation. Oh yeah. They literally spun out on blacktop, lightly covered with fresh fallen snow. One of the worst winter handling vehicles I've ever seen. And I'm guessing some car buyers who got them in the warm months of summer, bought the SUV for assumed better snow handling capabilities. Oh yeah. Only to regret their decision when the cold weather came. They were certainly disappointed if they thought a Kia Sportage was a good winter vehicle. Friends, one of the benefits of signing up for a channel membership here on the Homework Guy channel is that we'll do our best to steer you away from these troubled vehicles and we'll make sure that you never pay more than a fair market price on your next car purchase. Let's dig into our viewers' good questions, great referrals, wisdom, or really bad assumptions. In the good category on 11 fake fees, viewer Rocket Drone Media writes, to clarify, any and all delivery fees noted, even on the MSRP or window sticker, should be removed when dealing in negotiations. Answer. Friends, the answer is very simple. The manufacturer delivery fee many dealers tell you you must pay is already included in the MSRP, so you're already paying for it. So if you allow the dealer to also add a line item for the delivery or destination fee on your car contract, the dealer is charging you effectively twice. The second payment goes right into the dealer's pocket and they laugh all the way to the bank when you fall for their story on it. They laugh very hard. Yep. In the very bad assumption category, viewer BroDerp says on our video titled, do you have to pay dealer add-ons? The problem I see is that dealers get around this by adding some add-ons before you see the vehicle. If they add the additional items, glass etching, paint protection, fabric protection, etc., it's not like they can remove them and it's not like they added the charges after you agreed to a price. You have the option to not buy or accept the markup. It's shady, but I don't think it's illegal. (laughs) The smartest thing this viewer said is at the end, I don't think. In the body of the message are some totally false assumptions. This viewer says, if they added the additional items, glass etching, paint protection, fabric protection, etc., it's not like they can remove them, and it's not like they added the charges after you agreed to a price. I'm sure a lot of you totally disagree with that. First, dealers often spring add-ons on a car buyer after they get to the dealership. Right. That is a totally false assumption by this viewer. Clearly, this viewer not only didn't think, was a lousy student of the video they commented on, they could have easily looked up the Clayton Act we referred to in that video and easily known that forced add-ons were illegal no matter when they're put on the car. Right. It's assumptions like this that get many of you into trouble. Just because dealers aren't getting busted for violating the law, with add-ons doesn't mean they are legal. A burglar in your garage isn't in trouble until they're caught. Dealers are not being busted only means that a lot of people, people like this viewer, are letting them get away with it by accepting the dealer's add-on story and not suing them for legal violations. Friends, you get back three times the cost of the add-ons when you sue the dealer. I'd actually challenge them to violate the law and try charge me. Moving on to the great advice by other viewers category is advice and a referral by a viewer to a good Toyota dealer in Tennessee. Here's Rimfire Junkie who clearly did their homework commenting on 11 fake fees. I watched a pile of these videos and was ready for the fight. Very smart. Toyota dealer number one got one return email and a little movement, just enough to say they did something. Toyota dealer number two, one returned call, nothing else. Toyota dealer number three, pretty much cast me aside when I asked them about buying a new 4Runner. Toyota of Knoxville, Tennessee, dealer number four. Nitten, the salesman, took me to his desk. We looked up what was allocated. He texted me when what I wanted was in motion in every step of the way. The arrival day, we came to a mutually agreeable price. My check was written. The finance guy found a lower rate than my credit union. Wow, that's amazing. Then got my credit union to match. The accessories guy made his offer. I declined. Papers were signed and we were done. I kept my old vehicle and trade-in was never mentioned again. We worked off of out-the-door price and never mentioned payments. Offers I declined were never mentioned again. 
I recommend Toyota of Knoxville to a friend and salesman Nitten especially, and he got the same treatment and was super happy. Good. You see, friends, Rimfire succeeded because they didn't get frustrated by a few prick dealers they encountered yeah. initially. They just kept working until they found a gem. You see, some dealers totally know how to treat their customers, and Toyota of Knoxville clearly gets it. If you contact them or go there, ask for salesman Nitten. Tell him you heard about him from the homework guy. Nitten sounds like a great guy to us. Let's close with great advice from a dealer commenting on our video, Finding Better Dealers. Fred Retortle writes, Good morning to Kevin and Elizabeth. The automobile business, as everyone knows it, is like the world we now live in, filled with dishonesty and greed, making it difficult to trust anyone or anything, causing car buyers to even resist entering a showroom. I'm not here to endorse my dealership as we have been blessed with overflowing customers. We do not advertise, but maintain an honest approach to both the local community as well as across state lines. My daughter and I operate a dealership in New Jersey and are flat fee based. Our customers are referred to us because of our integrity. To start, our clients contact us with their needs and a budget so we can begin the process of making a good match. We only sell slightly pre-owned, low-mileage, high-grade Mannheim automobiles. We stay away from vehicles that have low reliability ratings and consult our customers so that they make the best choices. Every vehicle is detailed like new, paperwork completed, and promises kept. We humbly have over 70 five-star reviews. We are not the only ones that can achieve this. Almost anyone can attain this goal. It takes hard work, dedication, and a passion to help people. Hope this encourages some others to do the same. Way to go, Fred. Yeah. I love it that you felt compelled to leave us a comment. And by the way, feel free to comment with the name of your dealership in the comment section of this video. We'll definitely send people your way. Also, friends, as we shared with you recently, if you need the help, we can also help you locate a better dealer in a major city near you. All you have to do is become a channel member and then ask us. If you have trouble finding out how to join as a member, shoot me a text at 701-441-3399 and I will text you the join link. For the best direct help that you need, we recommend going straight to the top level of memberships with Homework Guy Consults. That package is $49.99. It is so much cheaper than anything you find out there and you get regular text message contact with both Kevin and me. When you sign up, if you first text me at 701-441-3399, I'll make sure you get Kevin's direct contact number. After you text him, Kevin will reach out to you too. Also, any membership level can be canceled or downgraded at any time, so there's no risk in limited expense. If you recently joined the Homer Guy channel as a subscriber, we thank you, appreciate you, and welcome you aboard. And to all of you new channel members, we really love working with you. Also, thanks again to our many faithful followers who just keep coming back. And to all of our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homer Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homer Gal. The Homer Guy team is serving truth, justice, and transparency in the car business and always will. We, we gotta, gotta go. go. You can't call it.